Good morning guys and welcome back to our channel. In Britain we're lucky enough to have free highly medicinal mushrooms so today we're going to try and hunt them out and try and make some medicine and we're going to take you guys along and show you how it's done. So the three different types that we're looking out for today hopefully we find all three of them. We've definitely seen two of them before up here so we're pretty confident we're going to be able to make some sort of medicine with them. So the three types of mushrooms that we're looking for are the birch polypore, the turkey tail mushroom and chaga. Two of them actually grow on birch trees so we're going to be looking mainly for birch trees today and then hopefully we can also find some turkey tail. But the turkey tail is extremely common, so I'm pretty confident we're gonna find some. All three of these mushrooms are really easy to identify. So if you've never foraged mushrooms in your life, then don't feel intimidated by this. Honestly, these are really easy mushrooms and we're gonna show you exactly how to identify them. We got pretty lucky and on the very first birch tree we found the birch polypore. There's actually three of them on this tree but today we're just going to take the bigger one because there's plenty in it. You want to make sure they're still soft and supple if you're going to harvest these because they do get firmer later on in the year but autumn is actually the perfect time to look for these. They do grow almost all year round but now is definitely the best time to pick them. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this mushroom free from the tree without removing any of the bark and that'll do us grand. That's mushroom number one. So as I said before, the mushrooms we're going to show you are really easy to identify. The way to tell this one is it will always grow on a birch tree. So if you can learn the bark and the leaves of a birch tree, that helps you a long way. The second thing is it's really plump. I mean, this one's like a good inch and a half, two inches thick. It's white underneath, it's pores, it's not gills. I'll show you the pores when I cut this off. And the top of the cap is light brown with spots usually. It's squidgy, kind of rubbery. It's quite a strange uh, texture actually. The only mushroom you can really mistake this with is called the Dryad Saddle, and that's actually an edible mushroom, so if you really did mess it up, it wouldn't matter anyway, because you've got a good mushroom. But anyway, we're gonna cut this off the tree now, with Lisa's little trusty knife. So there we have it. Mushroom number one, birch polypore. You can probably see in the shot that it's got loads of little speckles on it, it's light brown and it often has these kind of like, they look like stretch marks I guess, where the skin is breaking when it's grown. And the bottom, completely white, maybe slightly pale yellow. And if you look really really close there are thousands and thousands of tiny little holes where the spores get dropped out. It's a strange smell, maybe slightly reminiscent of like cucumber rind. Look at the chunkiness, it is chunky. But honestly, it's such an easy mushroom to identify, I mean nothing looks like that. Once you've seen it once, you've seen it. <laughs> These things could actually grow really big. This is probably a middle sized one, you know, we've seen them probably about this wide, they could be huge. But you do want to get them slightly younger. We've left a couple on that tree, there was a smaller one than this, about that size, and then a really small one. As Lisa called them, daddy, mummy and baby. So we've left mummy and baby behind so that they can grow up and produce more. But yeah, onwards, let's see if we can find some turkey tail and some chaga. We didn't have to search for much longer until we found the turkey tail. It's a very distinctive mushroom that grows in shelves or rosettes. The tops vary greatly in colour, but will always have coloured bands and a white rim. They can be found in shades of red, orange, brown, grey and even blue. The most important identifier of this mushroom is actually on the underside. The pore surface is white when young, and that's the only time you really want to collect it. If it is white and has pores, then it's the turkey tail. We also found the false turkey tail, which you can see here. It looks very similar until you look at the underside. If it's orange or has a teeth like surface, then you haven't got the turkey tail and you shouldn't harvest it.
So we searched high and low, but we didn't find any chaga. Um, as kind of expected, it's a bit of a rare mushroom to be honest. But we have found the polypore and loads of turkey tail. So two or three isn't too bad. The next step is processing these mushrooms. The turkey tails in particular are pretty filthy. So we're just going to take off all the grass and moss and bark and anything else that's attached to them. The easiest way to do that is using a pair of scissors. So I'm going to trim these up and then slice the polypore into as thin a slices as I can do with a knife and then they're ready for drying. I find that the best way to clean these is to use a pair of scissors and just to trim off this tough bit where it joined onto the branch. Often you'll get moss and grass and bark all involved in there and dirt. We don't have to worry too much about the dirt because we're going to wash these before we dry them off. So using the scissors you just want to trim this off. It's actually quite levery, so you definitely want a sharp pair of scissors for this. The top's sort of like suede, it's got a really fine fur to it. There's a perfect turkey tail, you can see why it gets its name. So that's the turkey tail ready, now we just got to slice up this polypore into nice thin strips so it'll dry quickly. It's quite a soft mushroom so it's not too hard to cut up. Yeah, you're really aiming for less than a quarter inch for this, otherwise it'll take a very long time to dry. It's quite a moist mushroom. So I'm not going to pretend to be a scientist and tell you about all the special things that these mushrooms can do, but I can tell you that both of them possess antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties. They're really powerful mushrooms and they're perfect for keeping away those colds and flus in the winter. Turkey tail has actually been used in Chinese medicine for thousands of years. And the biggest reason is because it's an immune regulator. It helps to balance your immune system and promote a good immune response against bugs and bacteria. So that's why I'm using these two mushrooms today. The chaga mushroom is also a powerhouse of medicinal values. But like I say, we didn't find any of that. We are lucky though, we've got a wonderful friend called Sam who's actually sent us some chaga tincture. So we actually already have that, which is excellent because now we've got all three of the best medicinal mushrooms in Britain. There are many others, but these three are by far the most powerful ones out there. Right, that's it. All the mushrooms are ready and prepped and ready to be dried. So the easiest way is to put them on a piece of cardboard, lay them out with plenty of space between them and just put it in your drying cupboard for a few days. All you gotta do is keep checking on them until they're crack and dry. But for us, we've got a dehydrator. And considering we've got access to mains electricity right now, we're gonna take advantage of this. Mushrooms are supposed to take six hours on 110 Fahrenheit, but I could imagine it's gonna take a lot longer for the amount of mushroom we've got. So all I'm gonna do now is stack all the mushroom into the dehydrator and get that on. Good morning, guys. So last night I set the dehydrator for six hours. Like I predicted, that wasn't long enough. I think I ended up with 10 hours in total to get it cracker dry. So I just checked on it this morning and it's looking perfect. The polypore is really dry and snaps really easy. The turkey tail's a little bit more fibrous, but it's also bone dry. So the next step is gonna be grinding this up into a powder so that we can use it for teas and for tincture. One tip when you're processing the turkey tail, I would make sure and hit your blender with high speed straight away. When you do that, the turkey tail sort of bounces around on the blade and doesn't get caught in it. If you go slow, it runs the risk of the turkey tail actually getting caught in the blade. So that's it, we've fully foraged and processed two medicinal mushrooms. We ended up with far more turkey tail than the birch polypore because the birch polypore dried into nothing. <laughs> so we've got far less of that. I would advise that you collect twice as much as you think you need because it really shrinks when it dries out. But we're quite happy to have more of the turkey tail because it's said to be the more medicinal of the two of them. So that suits us fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to separate a wee bit of the turkey tail aside to make some tea. And then we're going to mix the two together. Once we've done that, we're going to make a tincture, which we're going to show you in the next episode. So make sure and tune in for the next one if you want to get the most out of these mushrooms. But if not, you can use it as a stock, just adding it to soups and stews. 
Just make sure and soak it in boiling water before you add it to your soup or stew because it will be somewhat fibrous so it's a good idea to soak it and soften it up before you add it to your meal. Or of course another option is to make a tea. So I'm going to show you how to make a honey, turmeric and turkey till tea. So you want to do one cup of the turkey till powder and then five cups of water. Make sure you use a big enough pan before you start. Then all we're going to do is put it on the stove and bring it up to the boil. Once it's boiled you just want to reduce it to a simmer and simmer for at least half an hour. Or if you can do it for longer, that's even better. Once it's simmered for half an hour, you want to strain it. Once strained, you just want to add half a teaspoon of turmeric powder and half a teaspoon of honey to each cup. And there you go, healthy tea. Not bad at all, actually. It's kind of earthy, a little bit floral because of the honey. It tastes healthy anyway. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you're unsure about any of the mushrooms you're considering foraging, please just don't eat them. It's just not worth the risk. But we're always here if you want to message us, we're happy to help people identify mushrooms. We want to make sure you find the right ones to make excellent medicines. But honestly, these mushrooms are really easy to identify. This recipe is really easy to follow, you can't really go wrong. And it's worth learning because it really will hold off the bugs during the winter. And with the Covid virus kicking around, it's the perfect time to have your immune system boosted just in case. But anyway, we'll see you next week and hopefully Lisa's feeling a lot better and she can join in and show you guys how to make a tincture. But thanks for watching.